Okay, we're going to talk about how to lower estrogen levels. Here is the structure of estrogen, specifically estradiol, like the most important type of estrogen. Diol, di means two, ol means two alcohol groups. The most important thing to know about estrogen molecule is this little corner right here. It's called a phenol group. This six carbon ring cyclohexane with three double bonds is called a benzene. And this is a hydroxyl group. Together, they're called a phenol group. And this is the most important part of the estrogen molecule because that's what binds the estrogen receptor. And for who knows how many millions of years in evolutionary biology, the estrogen receptor had almost no competition for binding to its hormone of estrogen. And what that means is the estrogen receptor is not very fussy. Lots of industrial chemicals that have a phenol group on them will activate the estrogen receptor. And it turns out that this phenol group is very useful for industrial purposes. The benzene ring is super stable. It has what are called pi electrons that can run between all six carbons, so that stuff can stay on the shelf for five years and not change. And then the hydroxyl group is antimicrobial. Any type of cosmetic product, they don't want mold to grow in it, so they very routinely use preservatives of this type. Quite often these will be called parabenzoic acids. And there's a bunch of different types, subtypes of those. You'll often hear on a cosmetic product it'll say no parabens. Okay, well anyways, some type of paraben-like compound is routinely put into most moisturizers, sunscreens, and deodorants and whatnot. And that's a big reason why it's good to be a minimalist and not be putting that stuff on yourself. What's the big deal about estrogen and estrogen disrupting chemicals? EDCs is the abbreviation for estrogen disrupting chemicals. They'll also use that for endocrine disrupting chemicals. It can cause all kinds of problems. In children, it's a common cause of premature puberty. A lot of girls go into puberty, you know, much faster than they used to. In a natural environment, they might be going into puberty around 17. A lot of girls go into puberty, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old nowadays. Um, a big thing I think doing that is the whole milk. They've engineered cows to be pregnant while they make milk. It's more profitable for the dairy company, but a pregnant cow has very high estrogen levels, and that gets into the milk. All right. Next thing is premenstrual syndrome and menstrual cramps are increased by high estrogen levels. Endometriosis can be caused by that. I've known women, they went and had all these surgeries for endometriosis, and they never thought about what was their estrogen level. So if you're having one of these problems that's potentially estrogen related, see what you can do to reduce your intake of estrogen in your water, in your food, and your exposure transdermally. Okay, morning sickness of pregnancy increased and made worse by elevated estrogen levels, adenomyomatosis or adenomyosis of the uterus, increased risk of autoimmune diseases, high estrogen levels associated with pregnancy. You know, having a pregnancy is a little bit like having a transplant, okay? And it'll cause some changes in the function of the immune system, and that's thought to be a big part of the reason why women have much more autoimmune diseases than men do. Okay, next is benign breast masses, like fibrocystic disease, um, malignant masses of the breast, breast cancer, also endometrial cancer, prostate cancer, because the estrogen causes proliferation of the breast ductal cells. What's the most type, common types of breast cancer? Like breast ductal carcinoma. Causes proliferation of the endometrial cells. This is all stuff getting ready to have a baby and support the baby through pregnancy. So the endometrium is the lining of the uterus. In men, the equivalent of the uterus is the prostate. So men are at increased risk for prostate cancer with elevated estrogen levels. Okay, so now the question is, what can you do to reduce your estrogen levels? And you want to do this. It might help you, first of all, to avoid some of these diseases and um, to decrease your risk of getting breast cancer. Get a whole house carbon water filter. You don't want to be exposed to the estrogen in your water. Municipal water filtration focuses on preventing infections. They put chlorine and some other things in there, but that doesn't prevent your estrogen exposures. There's a lot of estrogens quite often in, in municipal drinking water. It can come from another woman who has birth control pills. She voids them in her urine. It goes into the water supply. Lots of that does not get removed. If you don't use at least a carbon filter, you're just drinking tap water, you're probably drinking someone else's birth control pills. Okay, in addition, they spray atrazine on lawns and on crops. That's another estrogenic you know, herbicide, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. And there's a whole bunch of other estrogenic chemicals in that water. You want a carbon filter at the minimum, have a carbon filter. I recommend it for your whole house. The reason is, 
in chemistry, like dissolves like. Your skin is primarily lipid. Theoretically, we evolved from sea creatures and swimming in the water, we don't want to get waterlogged with ocean water. So like dissolves like and opposites block each other. So lipid in our skin prevents water from coming in through our skin when we're swimming in the water. And the point is, if you put lipid on your skin, estrogen is a lipid, meaning that it's primarily hydrophobic. It will be absorbed transdermally, all right? So you don't want estrogens in contact with your skin. And not only that, let's say you drink that pregnant cow milk, all right? At least going through your portal vein, it goes into your liver and there's a first pass detoxification effect in your liver. Your liver will conjugate the estrogen, meaning bind it to another chemical, for example, glucuronic acid, and excrete it into the bile. When you have something that you put on yourself, like a cream or you got laundry detergent that's estrogenic, it just goes right through your skin and it goes into your blood and there is no liver first pass detoxification effect. All right, so what are other things? Store your water in glass. Don't be storing your water in BPA plastic. And watch out for BPA substitutes. BPA substitutes are a joke. I'll show you what an example. So you've all heard of BPA. BPA means bisphenol A. All right, and that's an estrogenic compound. And what it looks like is there's a phenol group on each side. OH, and then there's like a carbon and a couple more carbons or ethyl groups coming off. And then there's a phenol group on this side. That's your BPA. And what I'm trying to say is they're going to say, oh, BPA-free. They're going to use something called BPS. And BPS, they just put a sulfur group in the middle. Okay, it's still estrogenic, and there's a whole bunch of other BPA substitutes. Don't go for it. If it says BPA-free, that really doesn't mean anything. What I'm trying to say is use glass. Glass is relatively inert. Store your water in glass. So whatever you want to drink, store it in glass. I always use plain clear glass. I don't even want any painted glass. Who knows if it's got lead in it, you know? Uh, my wife said I'm an obsessive compulsive jerk for lead testing all of my uh, plates and stuff. I don't care. I want to be careful. Who knows where some of that stuff comes from? It's worthwhile. Any painted cup or dish or thing, check it for lead. Uh, luckily the ones I checked didn't have any and then I got made fun of, but I didn't care. All right, um, what else? Avoid meat. Meat is a screw job for estrogen. They often give estrogens to the animal, like a chicken, to help it grow faster and help it gain weight faster. Estrogen in high amounts tells the body that it's pregnant, store weight for the baby. So it increases increased weight gain. Let's say in a chicken you're eating that. But in addition, meat changes the gut bacteria. Basically, plants are carbohydrate and fiber. They tend to promote good gut bacteria. The fiber feeds the good gut bacteria. Meat is basically protein and fat and it tends to promote bad gut bacteria in terms of ones that are more likely to cause leaky gut and other problems. But an additional problem of meat-related gut bacteria is they'll often have an enzyme, glucuronidase, which will unconjugate the estrogen that had been excreted by the liver. That's how our bodies get rid of excessive estrogen. The liver excretes it into the bile and then we defecate it out of our systems. But to protect it from being reabsorbed in our gut, it's conjugated by the liver. The bad gut bacteria from the meat will deconjugate that estrogen and it gets reabsorbed into our body. And that will cause a lot more fibroid tumors. Oh, I forgot to write fibroids up here as things that estrogen cause. I know some women, they told me that every single woman in their family had to get a hysterectomy in her 30s. Okay, and the first thought that went to my mind is, yeah, they're probably all drinking tap water. Um, you don't want to get a hysterectomy in your 30s if you could avoid it. It dramatically increases your risk of atherosclerosis-related vascular dementia. Um, and other problems. Okay, what else here? We talked about deodorant a little bit. Deodorant, the thing about deodorant is the lymphatics between the breast and the armpit are shared. So if you're putting estrogens in your armpit, you're increasing your risk of breast cancer. Aluminum itself is an antiperspirant, but it's a metalloestrogen. It somehow stimulates the estrogen pathway to cause proliferation of breast ductal cells. In addition, there's typically going to be some type of preservative in there that's estrogenic, like a paraben, for example. And the other thing a lot of people do, especially women, is they'll shave their armpit first, then put the deodorant on. Well, that increases transdermal absorption. The amount of breast cancer in the upper outer quadrant has increased. It used to only be around 30%, now it's around 60%. So that change since about the 1920s um, has indicated that there's something changing about the distribution of breast cancer, and it seems most likely to be related to that deodorant. Um, what else would I say? The incidence of breast cancer is going way up. It's gone up like about, gosh, threefold since the 1970s. Tremendous amount of breast cancer. 
you go to some rural place and you know back rural China away from the big cities or some of these other countries where they eat old-fashioned plant-based diet they got hardly any breast cancer um, let's see what else to know about um, avoid all these moisturizers skin creams and stuff most of them are gonna have estrogen uh, receptors in there so you know if you got a big day a big event fine put all your makeup and creams on but I wouldn't do that every day because you know you're potentially exposing yourself to estrogenic tumor promoters um, even perfumes and colognes will have these estrogenic chemicals in them even soap I use newborn baby soap and that's got like two estrogens in it okay and I only use one squirt minimal and I only do it when I absolutely have to if I'm just hanging around the house that day I won't use that stuff um, avoid laundry detergent you know people are sort of think you got to have chemicals in everything you don't there's a lot of people in other countries they don't even put any laundry soap in. they just boil their laundry and all what you know what I'll just do my laundry extra hot run the cycle a little longer you don't need to put laundry detergent on there why quite often it's an estrogenic chemical like non-oxanol 9 it's stored in a plastic container made out of BPA with uh, conditioning of the container with phthalates three estrogens in your laundry detergent and then guess what you then put it in the dryer quite often with a softener and the softener is estrogenic then you put it on your skin and then it's in contact with your skin all day long all day long you got estrogenic chemicals flowing into your body all right you don't want that uh, I don't want it I like being fit and strong and I like having a, avoiding all this estrogenic stuff okay um, so I don't use laundry detergent you don't need to I don't like even dishwasher soap I never needed a dishwasher until I get married as a wife's idea and if I take something that's from the dishwasher I'll rinse it off first I don't want that dishwashing soap on there that's also tends to have estrogens in it and I don't care people can make fun of me good good luck good luck being as healthy as me all right all these little obsessive compulsive habits they keep me healthy fit and strong and smart and sharp and that's what I want I really don't care if someone else is well that's not normal or that's weird good fine you know I think like one of the stupidest things a person could do is say I want to be normal what does it mean to be normal all right yeah, I think you should set your goals a lot higher than that what you really want to be is the best you can be for yourself um, and that means you have to learn as much as you can about how to navigate the complex world we live in all right what else avoid becoming fat vegans are the skinniest people in the world the vegans the health vegans the ones that don't put oil in their food and eat junk food veganism they have an average BMI of around 22 meat eaters got average BMIs walking up towards 30 if they eat also junk food and whatnot um, so the reason you don't want to be fat is obesity the adipose tissue has an aromatized enzyme in there which will have a tendency to convert testosterone like hormones into estrogen like hormones so these are the, some of the things you can do and the good news is these are all doable and you could dramatically reduce your risk of breast cancer and these other problems also postmenopausal hot flashes are increased by these estrogenic chemicals so hope that's helpful